Hey, King of Kings Church, it is so good to be with you on this very special Sunday. Hey, listen, if you're watching with us on our live chat in YouTube, take a minute and say, hey, we'd love to know that you're here. Do me a favor too and do four things on our YouTube channel real quick. Number one, share this video. Number two, hit the thumbs up button to like it. Number three, click subscribe. And number four, tap the bell to get a notification when we have new videos just like this one. Just by doing these easy steps, you're helping others to hear the good word of Jesus. What a great, great weekend this is. When I look around Palm Sunday here at King of Kings from our Omaha I Street campus to our online campus, I see God doing amazing things. He's showing up. In all of our campuses, we have over 35 people getting baptized, either first time or renewal this week. And how great is that? See, when God does the amazing, we can't help but be amazed. And that's really, too, what we see in our Palm Sunday account today. God doing amazing things. John 12, 9, when the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came because of the amazing. And not only on account of him, meaning Jesus, but to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. God had done an amazing thing, and now they're amazed. And here's what that reminder is for me and for you today. God uses you to attract others to himself. God uses you to attract others to himself. And there's some really great power in that and honor in this reality. Here's the good news for you today. There's no ordinary average people of Jesus. So if you're a Jesus follower and you think, I'm just an ordinary person, who am I? Let me tell you right now, you're an extraordinary person with an amazing story to share to someone. As we see, as the crowds are coming in John 12, 12, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took palm branches, Palm Sunday. They took palm branches and they went out to meet him crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And here's the truth for you and me also. We're designed to cry out praise and acclamation of our great God and who he is. And by the way, if we won't do it, the rocks will. Luke 19, 40 says, he answered, I tell you that if these stones are silent, the very stones were would cry out. So the truth of the matter is you have a responsibility to share your story to glorify the Lord Jesus. I want to tell you about when I was 16 years old. I was out uh, at night, uh, we just were hanging out with some friends, and I was hanging out with one of my good friends, one of my best friends from high school, Mike Rose. And Mike and I um, were in one car, we took my car to go out that night, and then at the end of the night, about 11 o'clock, we drove back to where his car was at our high school, and his keys were gone and the car was locked. Now. We spent then about two hours just figuring out what was going on because we actually saw where his keys were. They were inside the car. Now you might think to yourself, okay, so he locked his keys in his car. He had a car that it was actually impossible to lock your keys in the car. Uh, the car had a mechanism so that you couldn't lock it from the outside without the key. And so we spent about two hours talking about the miracle and the work of Jesus. I got to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure why God had us in that place, except that I do know it was the first time he started to actually hear about the amazing work of God. And even to this day, Mike's still a good friend of mine. When we see each other, we'll just say the words, remember the key and it connects us with Jesus closer. Now here's the thing, when we have a testimony, and when we start to see and know the very work of God that is happening in our life, we actually get a target painted upon us. Because when we're starting to testify, and when we're starting to actually share the things of God around us, Satan gets to work within us. 
And so, so I want you to just think about this, that you get a little tiny mark, right? A target on you. And, and that's when we talk about being a Jesus person, we know that we're going to face difficulties. We're going to face trials. We're going to face turmoil because the, the devil is coming after us. John 12, 10, so the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well. Why? Because Lazarus had this amazing testimony about the work and the power of God. And so now Lazarus, Satan says, hey, through others, like it's not good to have him out telling the story, sharing with it. And in John 12, Jesus finds a young donkey, sits on it just as it was written. Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Now his disciples, they didn't understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered these things that had been written about him and that he had done for them. Now think about this. So, so Satan wants you and I to think that Jesus comes in anger and wrath. Like this is that kind of that things where we talk and we walk into a church and we say, oh, here I am. Is lightning going to strike? Right. God knows all the things I've done. I'm afraid. Right. God came on a donkey. Why is that important for you? Because if God was going to come on a donkey, that means peace. If God had come on a horse in those days when the king would ride in on a horse, the horse would announce war. But if they rode in on a foal of a donkey, that would announce that they're coming on a peace mission. And here's the thing. God came to this earth on a peace mission. What is the peace? To bring you and I peace with God. And that's what this is all about when we talk about Palm Sunday. That we actually have a king who wants to bring us peace. And he brings us peace all the time. You know, in our church body, we celebrate communion. We celebrate communion uh, here in your homes as well. And it's the physical reality of the peace of God that you tangibly hold the very hand and heart and love of God in your hand. You get to know that you have peace. Gosh, I remember my first communion as a kid. And uh, so in my church, I was growing up, it was a small church. And for the night of first communion, we actually had to give a public testimony uh, to the whole church uh, about what Jesus means to us. So the day of First Communion, in the morning I went to school, and I was sitting in Spanish class, and we had a little bit of time, and uh, Ben Wadsworth, he took a rubber band, and he extended it on his fingers, and he pulled back, and he snapped it right on my back. Oh, man, did it hurt. So I got up, and I was going to pound Ben right? And he takes off running. So I take off running. Here's these two kids in a classroom of 25 running around the classroom. Our Spanish teacher, Mrs. Diaz, she is at the light switch, turning the lights on and off, going, stop, stop, stop. Not that that's going to stop two boys angry with each other. So then finally we stop. Finally, everything gets done. She sends us down to the principal's office and says we were fighting. Now, I suppose we were. We were really chasing each other. No fists were thrown, right? Well, the principal was out of, out of the office, so we had a couple hours where we were just sitting in there chit-chatting. Finally, the principal comes in. And we're good now. <laughs> but the principal looks at us and says, Boys, you are fighting. You're suspended. We were suspended for the whole week. So my parents come after the phone call that I was suspended and they're extremely upset with me. First time I've ever been suspended. Only time I was ever suspended. And my mom looks at me and says, huh, I wonder what you're going to say to the whole church tonight. You know, what happens to us is when we're growing closer with God, we find ourselves having that target of ways of where we look and we think, we don't have to love others or we get caught up into our own world and our own reality where I was going to become closer that night and share a testimony with Jesus. I had to share how human I really am. And again, that target just continues to get bigger, right? I can think too of other targets we get. Major losses in our life failure in godly relationships, 
divorce, estrangement, loss of life to those who are near and dear to us. I still remember when my grandfather died. And I, I remember looking out of my house and just thinking about, is God real? Just thinking about how much pain and hurt that caused for me. And just wondering, like, what does life really mean and matter? And again, in those times of great loss, we end up focusing on ourselves and we have another target on our back. You know, when we get baptized, it's that first time we've been called, claimed, named, and made his own. And again, we get another target on our back. When we renew our baptism or recommit our lives to the covenant we've made with God, a target on our back. You see, Satan is only going after those who are making kingdom movement. So the Pharisees in John 12, 19 said to one another, you see, look, we are gaining nothing. Look, the world's gone after him. Satan made promises to Jesus, which Jesus knew he wouldn't fulfill. Satan made promises to the Pharisees. If you want to keep your power, you want to keep everything going on, kill Jesus, kill Lazarus. Satan made promises to Judas. Betray him. 30 pieces of silver will fulfill you. Satan's made promises to you, to me. And here's what always happens with the promises of Satan. They never fulfill us. See, he always is putting a target on you because his only only thing that he cares about is to devour you, destroy you in cowardly, deceitful, and dishonest ways. He's the father of lies. Now, that means as Jesus people, you and I walk around and we look a little bit different spiritually. Because we walk with the target on us every day. And it means that I know that I have a target on my back, on my front. It means that I know that Satan wants to get after me through pride, through power, through, through anything that's there. But Palm Sunday is a reminder that no matter what comes in our lives, the only promises that bring fullness to life and triumph over the devil's targets are found in Jesus. If you're not baptized today, I want to invite you to get baptized. I want to invite you to take a step forward to commit yourself to Jesus. I want to invite you to Easter online. I want to invite you to invite your families and others through texting to say, come to our online campus, to our online church and experience the fullness and the promise of Jesus. Because here's the other good news about Easter. We have a target, but because we also live in the empty tomb reality, none of the arrows will kill us. Because the victory over sin, death, and the devil is already won through Jesus. So as you prepare to celebrate the victory, prepare to share the good news of the victory through your story and your testimony and seeing the triumph you have over Satan, over sin, today, tomorrow, and forever through Jesus. Amen.